Hi, this is your host Apni Bhartiya and welcome to State of Energy show. What Carbon recently joined the LF Energy Foundation and today we have with us Maggie Young, CEO of What Carbon. Maggie, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Rob. It's nice to be here. So let's just start with some of the basics, you know, tell us a bit about the company. Uh, what was the, you know, primary goal that is there behind the company and what's in the name? Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, we started the company last last summer um, and I, you know, it came out of work that I had been doing previously in my career to measure um, hourly energy savings. And um, one of the things that we were, that I realized in doing that work was that we didn't have a similar concept for carbon emissions. And so if you think about, you know, scope one, scope two, scope three, carbon emissions, scope two are those emissions associated with your electricity usage. And the way that most organizations measure it currently is by looking at your total annual energy consumption and the you know, mix of electricity that uh, is uh, the mix of resources that are used to provide electricity for your local grid. Uh, on an annual basis, that can look pretty good if you've got you know a lot of solar and wind energy uh, that's powering your grid. But if most of the time that you use energy is at night when the sun is down, uh, well, you're not really taking advantage of that solar electricity. Uh, by contrast, if you use most of your energy during the middle of the day when the sun is shining, um, you're you're doing quite a good job. Uh, but our carbon emissions numbers don't reflect that. They don't reflect the time of day in which energy is being used relative to the availability of renewables. So if we're going to decarbonize, if we're going to get to net zero, we have to start aligning when we use electricity with when renewable energy is available on the grid that you're connected to. And so that's what our company is designed to do, is to provide visibility for organizations that are trying to reach their net zero goals to help them quantify exactly what their hourly carbon emissions are from scope two, and then to drive towards decarbonization and hitting their net zero goals. Can you also help us understand how do you provide that visibility? Well, that's what's in a name. So watt and carbon, uh, any, any building is gonna be connected to the grid. It's gonna have a meter on the side. It's going to be recording for the most part, the energy consumption on a real time basis. Now the tricky part has been to match that up to the carbon emissions of the grid and of late, um, some, some really great work has, been, has, been, has gone into quantifying carbon emissions on an hourly basis that are coming from the grid. So what our software does is it takes the energy data from a building or from a device, say like an electric vehicle charger or a, an IoT device, and connects it to the grid carbon intensity data uh, so that you know, within a couple of clicks of a few buttons, an organization can inventory its entire building fleet or its entire... Uh, electricity load and get the carbon emissions associated with it. As companies are setting these goals for them, what are the things that they are overlooking? You did mention very, you know, interesting, you know, aspect, you know, that when to use renewable. But what are the things that you see they are overlooking, and that that is not actually solving the problem as fast as it should? Well, part of the problem is that we're flying blind, right? So you can only manage what you can measure, and unfortunately, even sophisticated companies like Google and Microsoft that are on the leading edge of trying to you know, get to 24 seven carbon free energy are still tr struggling to make those connections between their energy consumption and the availability of renewable energy. And that's one of the reasons that I, I uh, started working with the Linux Foundation on this project specifically uh, was to help enable those companies to, to start to measure more accurately and to get the vis visibility that they needed to be able to move forward with confidence. You know, it's one thing to go to your CEO and say, hey, we'd like to get to net zero. It's another, another thing to be able to go to your CEO and say, here are the metrics that we're going to use and here's the progress that we've achieved towards that goal. It just makes for a much more compelling argument internally when you have something specific to point to. Now, there's a lot of ambiguity in that measurement uh, to date, and that's why the work of LF Energy is so important, uh, that if we're all kind of using different numbers or if our words mean different things we don't have a standard vocabulary even to use for this one person might report carbon emissions that mean one thing and another comp another company might report it and it means something else and without being able to have an apples to apples comparison we don't really know what to make what to make of those differences and so that's why we're working on setting up these data standards uh, through lf energy uh, to be able to um, all be speaking the same language, as it were. Since you mentioned LF Energy, and uh, that's also one of the focus of today's discussion, is uh, 
What role do you see LF Energies playing in you know reducing carbon footprint and helping company achieve their goals? Well, open source is critical to all of this. Uh, the work that I did prior to this company, uh, also we partnered with with LF Energy uh, around the Open EE meter and Caltrack, and so those were standards that were developed to quantify demand side electric electrical savings uh, from participating in energy efficiency and demand response programs. And out of that, we've been able to build robust markets for reducing energy consumption. But those markets can only exist when there's open, transparent methods available and, and tools available for making those calculations. Well, the same thing goes for carbon, right? If we're going to get to net zero collectively as, as, you know, as, as a planet, uh, we've got to be have confidence that the numbers that we're representing are, again, transparent and verifiable. Um, and so LF Energy um, and its capacity to set standards to bring, you know, as a pre-competitive organization, right, to bring companies together that may otherwise, you know, not be able to work work on aligning around standards. Uh, now, because of LF Energy, those those relationships are, can be established, uh, those methodologies can be developed, and then ultimately we can reach consensus around the, the best way to go about uh, measuring uh, progress. One more thing is that uh, as important as it is to curate and host open source project, it's also, in, I think this is a problem which cannot be solved independently or in, in, individually. We need to bring all these companies together. So can you also talk about the role that LF Energy is play, uh, playing in, you know, in bringing these companies together. And if you look at the bigger umbrella, which is Linux Foundation there, they have like so many projects. So it, it's, you know, an uh, incredible, you know, kind of, you know, place where you can do a lot of cross-pollination. You can leverage each other's project. You can also build relationships. So can you talk about that aspect also? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw it, you know, in, in the work that we did previously with Caltrack and the Open EE Meter. We're seeing it now with the Carbon Data uh, Consortium that you have these and and really smart people who have been working on these issues for a long time right so but they've been working at it kind of within their own silos or within their own organizational contexts but when they get together all of a sudden like wait a minute we've been thinking about it this way oh and you've been thinking about it this way but but aha there's this you know we we bring those experiences together right and there's there's an emergent property associated with that and i think that's that's you know what open source in a lot of ways is about right it's it's about uh, tapping into a lot of individual work streams, but bringing those together in a way that creates a better result than if individuals were just working on it in their own silos. When we look at this problem, it is seen as, in some cases, political problem. It could be a problem, you know, which is technical problem, or it could also be an economic problem. So when you look at it, which of these is the biggest challenge to deal with and which one is the easiest one? I think we look at this as an opportunity and not a problem. I mean, there's obviously a, a, a problem that exists in so far as that, you know, we understand that emissions of greenhouse gases are leading to climate change. Uh, but the opportunity here is to really, you know, push forward on a, a vision for the future that is that is fundamentally optimistic, right? That That we can, you know, eliminate energy poverty. We can do so in a way that creates more resilient, sustainable communities, um, and we can diverse, diversify our energy supplies. And when we see today the geopolitical implications of a reliance on fossil fuels, um, and, um, and hopefully that as, as we move forward on this, that the technolog technological solutions that, that we develop, uh, both in, this, in terms of you know, the physical systems that we're developing, as well as the you know, IT systems that we're able to develop are fundamentally empowering, uh, so that it's not just first world countries that are you know able to you know invest heavily in you know new technologies, but those will also become available more more broadly to the to the globe, uh, so that we don't we can skip some of the cycles of development that rely heavily on fossil fuels and move all of our communities across the planet um, into a more sustainable, diverse, um, energy diverse uh, future that doesn't rely so heavily on fossil fuels. As you already mentioned, you folks are already involved with a lot of open source projects. Now you have kind of officially joined LF Energy. So how does that change your relationship with not only open source community, or to be more precise, how will you be involved with LF Energy? How will you be helping them, and how will they, be, they help you? Well, I'll tell you what, Swapnil, it's, it's hard, you know, as a new company where you don't have a lot of resources, you know, and you've got to make a decision about where to put, you know, 
those resources. And so uh, it was it was probably the most important um, commitment that we've made thus far in terms of joining an organization was was joining LF Energy. And um, and I think it's because of what it stands for and what we stand for, right? That um, that carbon accounting, that this you know, fundamental measurement about something that's so critical to our future doesn't shouldn't belong in the hands of, 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 a, of, of a single company. We're going to be developing tools that make it easier for companies to get to their net zero goals. But I don't want that to be buried within a black box. That's not the thing that I want to build you know, intellectual property around and try to patent and say, you know, say nobody else can use this. Um, but instead to bring that to the public, right? And to, and to other organizations that can also build upon those tools and deliver value in their own right. And whether those are other startup companies or, or well-established companies, this is important for all of us. Um, and so LF Energy is really important in that regard because they can act as that intermediary, that host for these great ideas and using their platform actually makes them better, right? So that as others dig in, you know, we, we had this experience with the open e meter that as we, you know, made that available through LF, through LF Energy and others started to use it too, we realized, you know, they were contributing really good ideas and really good enhancement to it that we hadn't either thought of because it wasn't, you know, our particular use case or, um, or that we had just overlooked, right? And so that, you know, I think there's inherent value in bringing something, a new concept, a new technology, you know, especially around software into an open source community where, um, where lots of folks can contribute to its development and, um, and it becomes a richer resource for all of us. If I ask, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, what kind of activities uh, that you are expecting to see within the LF Energy ecosystem? Well, we're heavily involved in the carbon data specification, right? So that's gonna be the, the big uh, initiative for us uh, over the next year, you know, so, uh, but there's a lot of complementary work that's being done within LF Energy and it's this ecosystem that I think we're really excited about. Um, so whether or not you're working on, the, you know, a specific issue like carbon data, or if you're on the other side, like the open EE meter or, any of the other initiatives that are, that are going on, they all sort of complement and, and enhance each other. And while you know, not all of us have the time uh, to be you know, present in all of these working groups and all of these, there's, there, there is enough overlap between all of them that I think that collectively they enhance each other. And so we're getting to a, a world in which you can imagine you know, energy looking a lot like the open source communities of, of you know, computers did you know ten or fifteen years ago when when the Linux Foundation you know really made it a point to to bring together a lot of those technologies that we take for granted today but are a critical part of our computational infrastructure. Uh, so we're so I'm hopeful that you know as we move forward you know with our carbon data specification that that's helping to inform the work that others are doing, but also that it can be informed by adjacent uh, work that's being done within within LF Energy on other projects as well. Peggy, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk about the company, talk about this problem or the way you look at it as an opportunity. Uh, uh, and also you're involved with the LF Energy and the things that we should be looking forward to. Thanks for those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Lopnal. Appreciate it.